Hi, and welcome to Missed It By How Much. This is the channel that tests sports hypothesis using computer game engines. We're currently in the 1990 season testing whether or not the Dodgers would win the National League West over Cincinnati if they did not have Alfredo Griffin playing shortstop throughout the year. But today we're gonna it's gonna take a back seat. We're going to look at a team that has moved up the ladder in the American League East, and that would be the Cleveland Indians. This is a team that's exceeding expectations with the 26 and 18 record currently. And if they win today's matchup against the California Angels, they will move maintain a tie with Toronto for the top spot in the East. How do they get there? One of the ways is by hitting. They lead the American League in hitting right now. They're fourth in on-base percentage, second in slugging, and second in on-base plus slugging, which is all in incredible and amazing statistics. Boston, who led by many games earlier in the season, has fallen to two games back and now is currently in third place, as Toronto has maintained pretty much throughout the season a certain level and is now the leader, at least before this game. Looking at their lineup for that season, you see a couple standouts. Uh, Jay Brown was above 100 on the OPS chart. Brooke Jacoby, Andy Maldonado, and I want to zero in on Chris James, who's a name that I don't know very well, but has played very well this season, so far this season. And did a great job for the real team in 1990. Uh, you see a couple other names. Dion James that are familiar. Carlos Baerga. Tom Brookins. Even Ken Phelps. Who uh, New York Yankee fans don't want to talk about. Also, during the season, a young right-hander named Charles Nagy came up for his first outings with the team. Didn't pitch great, but anybody who follows the tribe know what a storied name he is in their history. So today is a possibility. It says here Farrell will be pitching for the Indians. However, I noticed looking at their roster, they had brought him up. And it's a possibility, I saw in an earlier uh, matchup, that he would start. If, even if he doesn't, he could come into the game, and that would be historic watching his first outing. Whether that happens or not, we'll have to see. Looking at the team overall, Deion James leads them right now with the 907 OPS and our runs created 27 of 8.7. Chris James, the aforementioned outfielder or DH, has hit seven home runs and has an OPS of 9.49. And a runs created 27 of 8.2. There you see some of their other players. Candy Maldonado leads them in home runs with 9, which isn't a surprise. Bayerga, mostly playing third base, has played well. Looking at their pitching, nothing stands out. Tom, Tom Candiotti, with his dancing knuckleball, has pitched decently. Especially for the American League. Doug Jones has seven saves, but an ERA of over six. So there you see Charles Nagy still hasn't played yet. And perhaps he will in today's contest against the California Angels. He'll be, they'll be facing Chuck Finley, who has a 5.16 ERA. California has not played well thus far. In the American League West, that's been led by the Minnesota Twins and the Chicago White Sox with Oakland only bringing up third thus far. I made a prediction earlier in the month that Oakland would overtake Minnesota. I was sorely mistaken there. California is dead last, 19-28 and 28 record. So we'll do a little scouting today and watch... 
the Indians take on the Angels in Anaheim and see what's what's special about this team making a run again early in the season, but surprisingly good and I know a welcome addition after their many years of torture for the fans of the Cleveland baseball team. There you see the results from May the 30th. A couple things to point out over here on the highlight side. Jack McDowell had a good pitching performance on the 28th. Glenn Wilson on the 29th had two home runs. And as you see here, the 28th, Cleveland had 17 hits. And on the 29th, they had 22 hits. So we expect a lot of hits today. Dave Stewart with a nine-inning complete game shutout with only one walk. And Ricky Henderson on a 15-game hitting streak. So it does look like Farrell will get the start for the, for the Tribe. But we'll see for sure in just a moment. Put both teams' manager as computer. There you see the rosters. Farrell will start. Nagy is in the bullpen, though. We'll see if he gets his first outing today. The Angels have taken the field. Their usual defensive lineup, except I don't see Schofield as short. Anderson's there. Kent Anderson. Dave Winfield, <clears throat> for a last place team, has played excellently. He already has 14 home runs versus 21 he had in the real season. He's probably an all-star if you can keep this up for another month. But the Angels aren't the story. Cleveland is, and they'll start off with Jerry Brown. And hits a fly ball to Winfield. That's one out. There's Webster. Another fly ball, this time to Max Venable out in center. Two down for Deion James. Or, excuse me, Chris James. And hits one to the shortstop. Let's see what happened there. Are we going to get to see? I guess we don't. <clears throat> Either way, that's the first half inning over. For the Angels in the bottom of the first, Venable grounds out. Farrell's pitch to Kent Anderson is a base hit to center. One out single for Johnny Ray. It's a fly ball to Modern Maldonado out in right. He has it. Two down. For Joyner, Wally hitting 267, strikes out. So we're through one, no score. Sandy Eleanor Jr. starts off the second with a base hit to center field. Venable throws it back in for Maldonado. He walks, so first and second, nobody out. Against Chuck Finley, here comes Jacoby. Brooks strikes out. For Tom Brookin. He hits a ground ball to short. Could be two. Kent Anderson over to Ray for one. And that's all. So Brookins beats it out. There's runners at the corners with two out for Carlos Baerga. And that looks like a liner to Anderson. We're through one and a half. No score. Farrell versus Downing. And he hits a deep drive to left. But playable for Chris Jane. One out. Liner by Parrish, who just came off the DL, I do believe. And Farrell strikes out Chili Davis to end the second. Two, it's no score through two. Fermin hits one into right field. Poor play by Ray. Fermin is on. For Brown, is that a bunt? Squibber to Joiner over to Finley. That moves Fermin in scoring position with one out. Webster 
Hits one to right. Dave Winfield going back. He should have it. He has a good arm, too. Let's see if Fermin tries to tag on it. One out. Does not. Two down. For Gene. Chris. Gets a base hit to center field. As we bragged on him earlier, looks to score a run. Let's see if Fermin scores here on Venable's arm. Should. one nothing Tribe. Alomar walks. So first and second with two outs for Maldonado. And he laces one into left field off Finley. Shelly Davis picks it up. Let's see if Chris James tries to score. Not known for speed. But he does. It's 2 nothing. Here's Jacoby. He pops it up. Howell and Anderson. It looks like Anderson's closest. And that ends the top of the third, but the Indians get two runs. It's 2-0. Dave Winfield with a ground ball to Bayerga. Strong throw to Jacoby. That's one. Next up, Jack Howell. Another ground ball to Bayerga. Over to Jacoby. That's two out. <clears throat> Showing off the arm at third. Max Venable. Is this? Nope, this one's going to go to Fermin. Three ground balls by Farrell. Nice job. Through three. It's 2 nothing, Cleveland. Brooken strikes out to start off the fourth. Bayerio laces one into right field. That's the fifth hit for Cleveland. He'll hold with a single. Or for me. And it looks like he's got a looper into left. The base hit. That's the sixth hit for the Indians. First and second with one out for the top of the order and Jerry Brown. The governor hits one in the gap. Sorry. Stealing that line. The runners are running around. Brown holds at second. And two more score on the sixth hit. Oh, no, he's going for three. Relay. And he gets it. It's first triple of the year. It's 4 nothing Cleveland. Webster pops it up. This isn't going to get him home. Sorry, Chris Berman, about stealing the nickname for Jay Brown. <laughs> I apologize for that. Two out now for Chris James, and he strikes out. But the Indians add two, and they're now up 4-0. Here's a hit by Anderson to Jacoby. Quick play to first, and they just get Anderson. One out for Ray. He singles into center. He's going for two, and he's got it. His 10th double of the season. One out double for Joyner. He hits a liner to Brown. Looks like he's got it. And he's going to pick off Ray into a double play. Yep, and the Angels are done in the fourth. It's still 4 0. To the fifth. Alomar grounds out to Anderson. The foul tip. Maldonado strikes out. That's the fourth K for Finley. Two out here in the top of the fifth. And Jacoby pops it up to Howell. He's going into the stands to catch that one. We're through four and a half. It's four nothing Cleveland. Brian Downing starts off the bottom of the fifth with a ground out to Bayerga. He's been busy over there. There's Lance Parrish. He pops it up for me. Calling. Two out. And Farrell has pitched well. John Farrell, nice job so far. And just as I say that, Chili Davis hits one in between second and Third, and there's a base hit. He's on with two out. For Winfield, he hits a ground ball back to Farrell, over to Jacoby, and that'll do it. We're through five. Four nothing. Cleveland. Finley gets his fifth strikeout there. Bayerga grounds one to Ray, over to Joyner. Two out here in the sixth. For Fermin, is two for two. And it looks like he's going to be three for three with this shot up the middle into center field. Two out single. Brings up the top of the order again, Jerry Brown, who doubled last time and got two RBI out of it. He'll walk here with two outs first and second for Webster. Mitch. Zero for three, but not now. He's one for four as he hits one into right field. Winfield will pick it up. He has a good arm and eight. See, for me, he can run. And he comes without a throw. It's 5-0 Indians. Are they going to intentionally walk Chris? Nope. They bring in Ryan Harvey, strikes him out. We're through 5.5. It's 5-0 Cleveland. 
Jack Howell first one up against Farrell. He grounds out. Venable hits one down to Brown. Jerry picks it up. Over to Jacoby. Two out. Farrell against Kent Anderson. He walks him. Two, on, two out. One on. For Ray. Who has a double. It's a ground ball to Fermin. Felix to first. They got him. They're, we're through six. Two-thirds of the way finished. 5-0. Indian. Elmar Jr. hits one to Anderson. Mr. Anderson throws him out at first. Sorry, I've been wanting to do that for a while. Harvey, who used to be a saves machine for this team, now looking to do middle relief, it looks like. Two out for Jacoby. Ground ball back to Harvey. He gets him at first. Replay. ERA is over five. Not surprising. To the bottom of the seventh, Farrell cruising for the 5-0 lead. Get Joyner to ground out. If Farrell's not a ground ball plus plus pitcher, I've never seen one. There's a second walk to Downing. 89 pitches in. Here's Parrish. She hits one to left. Looks playable. Chris James closes the mitt around the ball. That's two out. Downing will go back to first. For Davis. Chili strikes out. We're through seven. It's 5-0, and the Indians are showing why they're going to be tied for first if they can hold on for six more outs. Well, almost six. Yeah, six more outs. Harvey pitching well. I don't remember Harvey working this many innings. He's now down to five on his ERA, so that'll help. But still, surprising. He was a, a closer that I remember being very good. Five outs for a win for the Indians. Howell walks. We'll see how far Farrell can go here. He's got 96 pitches. 99 now out of 105. He's now over. But two outs. Schofield comes off the bench and hits a fly ball to James. This has been a pretty easy game for him. We're through eight. Five zero. Let's see. I wonder if they're going to let him go for the shutout here. He's over his pitch count. And Harvey now showing off the K that I remember. I believe he had a fork ball, if I remember back in the 90s. But could be wrong about that. He was a good pitcher. Not this season so far, though. And a little replay. James moves to second on the pass the ball with two outs for Alomar. It's a ground ball. Schofield came in to hit, and now he's playing short. And this is going to be a close play at first. And he's safe. So there's runners at the corners for Maldonado, who should be hit for. I would only pit, hit him against lefties. He is exclusively, but Cleveland's been playing him every day, it seems like. Now it feels so. He does not come through here, so we're through 8.5. It's 5-0. And Farrell's going for the complete game shutout. He got one out. Two more to go. And there's a base hit. For Joyner, his first hit. Farrell's 11 pitches over. For Bichette, Dante coming up. Fly ball. Two outs. Joyner goes back to first. He's going to pitch to Parrish. There's a base hit. Let's see if that pulls him. Into left field. James picks it up. Two on. Still 5-0 lead. Four play by James. Gets the hit. Is Lance Perry, or Chili Davis, excuse me. And a ground ball to Brown and Jerry over to over to Fermin at second. Goes the short way to finish the game. And the Cleveland Indians have beaten the California Angels 5-0 in a shutout by John Farrell. And even though there were a lot of hits in that game, I think the star of the show would have to be John Farrell throwing a shutout. Something you said you would see more often in the 90s were, were pitchers who just, they, they took the ball and they didn't give it up. And unless the pitcher came out and you were pitching that poorly, you definitely had a chance to do it yourself. And he throws 127 pitches, gives up only five hits, two walks, four Ks, expected 107, so he went 20 over, but... Well done.
the Indians pound 11 hits, not 17, not 22, but still good showing. Jacoby and Brookins, the only players that started that did not get hit. Vermeen with three, Alomar Jr. with two, and Chris James with two. And Brown with two RBI, Webster, James, Maldonado each with a single one. So, kind of a, let's see if there's anything here. On the pitching side for California, just an awful start for Finley. Harvey came in, pitched well. Frazier was in for two pitches. And yes, John Farrell should have been the MVP. So a quick one there. When the game reloads, you should see Cleveland move into a flat-footed tie with Toronto for the top spot of the American League East. And there you saw a pretty good example of why Things are going so well. Again, California in the basement of the AL West. Not stiff competition, but that's a pretty good lineup that Cleveland puts out there. And it's only going to get better in the coming years with the guys they have to bring up like Tommy and Manny Ramirez. I seem to remember Bayerga playing second base, though. I could be wrong. If I am, let me know in the comments. Next up, next uh, video will be about the Dodgers. They're on the last game of their homestand. Or excuse me, on their road trip. And they'll be taking on Pittsburgh. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching. Missed it by how much.